July 31st, 1892. Dear Martha, our wagon arrived. Everything is fine, nothing broken, and all of our food supplies are in good order. Seeing the wagon again made us happy and sad at the same time. It reminds us of all the good memories of our trip, but it also made us sad that we weren't able to finish the journey with the rest of the wagon train. It made us sad to see Dylan's little seat, his playpen, and his little clothes and toys. But it was like coming home. The wagon helped me feel like I was in the right place and that I belonged again. Just the smell of it, the linseed oil on the canvas, the smell of the wood, the smell of the kegs of supplies, were friendly, homey smells. Today, Daniel and I helped Mama and Pap pull everything off our wagon. We set up supplies and bedding out on the ground. Then we swept the inside of the wagon until there wasn't a grain of dirt or sand anywhere. Mama and I oiled the canvas with linseed oil. Pap and Daniel loaded all the compartments and buckets with animal feed, fresh water, and kindling for starting fires. We reloaded everything back into our wagon. So tomorrow we'll be able to start driving down to our new land. The plan is that in two weeks, all of the carters will come down and help us build part of our house. Then the rest of the building will have to be up to Pap, Daniel, and me. Our lumber and furniture should be delivered to our new land sometime next week. Oh, Martha, we are all so excited about it. Daniel said, my Pap was a carpenter. I learned a lot from him so I can help you build. Pap said, it will be a fine thing to have you helping me. I need another set of strong arms. I don't think Pap could have said anything that would have made Daniel happier. He is still shy because he is not used to being a part of a family. Even when his Pap was alive, it was just the two of them and they didn't even eat regular meals. I talked to Mama about it. And she said that a boy like Daniel will have to work his way into feeling comfortable in our family. I think the new house will have a, will be good for all of us. It will be a fresh start. So all the memories we make, all the adventures we have will be fresh and new. The stories I want to tell my family haven't all come at once, like I expected them to. But sometimes they come out when you at least expect them. This afternoon, we went fishing with the Carters. While we were waiting for the fish to bite, I told the story of staying with Wanda Watson and going fishing with her. Mama and Pap were fascinated that she was so old in years and yet so spiry. Mama said, how did you get to her house, Teddy? I told her about walking from where Joe, the cotton farmer, left us off at the end of the road. Pap said, and you two left her place in what kind of boat? Daniel said, a John boat. It's like a rowboat, but with a flatter bottom. We pulled down the spring and up the river for a few days. Mama said, Teddy, what an adventure. I said, Mama, since I saw you last, I rode across the sky in a big, big balloon. Mama said, you didn't. I said, Daniel and I rescued, rescued Ethelbert from Dr. Zorn again. Pap said, that scoundrel that makes that elixir. I said, and we rode elephants. Daniel said, and we marched in the 4th of July parade with John Philip Sousa. Mama said, you met John Philip Sousa? Daniel said, he gave us each a silver dollar. The truth is, Martha, that I have had an incredible experience these last few months. Good or bad, those memories have become a part of me and now a part of you too because of my letters. Love, Teddy. Dear Martha, today was another one of those days when I wish you could have been with me. It was a good day. We are headed to our new land. Pap has a map that was given to him by a man at the land deed office in Juneau. It shows exactly where our new land will be. Mama is driving the wagon. Veronica is sitting beside her in a little chair Pap made for Dylan. Pap is riding Gabriel and Daniel is riding Swift. Oh, I forgot to tell you about Swift. Pap bought a beautiful new horse for Mr. Ampole, a man in Fort Pierce. She is just two years old and she is gorgeous. Pap took me with him to buy her. He said, 
Teddy, this being part of a family is new for Daniel. He's been on his own for a long time. I think he needs something of his own. Something is all his. Something he can take care of. Do you think he would like to have a horse? I could see where Pap was going with this. Part of me was envious. I'll admit I would have loved to own a horse of my own. Hadn't I been away from my parents, out on my own? Didn't I deserve something special for all I had been through? But I could also see what Pap was trying to do for Daniel. I could see that this was right. Pap let me pick her out. Well, that wasn't hard. She was the best looking horse in the lot and very gentle and obedient. Pap checked her out carefully. He looked at each of her hooves and her teeth. He ran his hand over her withers and watched her gait. When he was satisfied, he paid Mr. Ample, tied her behind the little wagon we had come in, and we drove the wagon home. I wanted to name her. I had all kinds of great names picked out. Pap said, well, now you could do that. We could give Daniel a horse that you've already named. Do you think he'd like that? Rats, why do I always have to do the right thing? I said, you're right. He'd probably like to name her himself. When we got home, Daniel, Mama, Veronica, and the Carters came out to the stable to see her. Daniel said, this is the prettiest horse I have ever seen. Everyone agreed. Pap said, I asked Teddy to pick her out. She did a good job, didn't she? Daniel said, Teddy, you are one lucky duck. I said, well, this horse isn't for me. It's for another lucky duck. Daniel didn't get it. He said, who's that? I said, start quacking. He stared at me. It's you, silly. We picked her out for you. Daniel said, for me? Who is she? Really? Pap said, she's for you, Daniel. You'll need a horse to ride on the new property. She's yours. I watched Daniel's face as he tried to understand that this exquisite new horse was for him. I looked at Pap's face, too, and he winked at me. The happiness I felt for Daniel almost made up for the fact that the horse was for him and not for me. Daniel said, does she have a name? Pap said, no. That's for you to decide. Daniel said, me? I don't know what to name her. Teddy, will you help me name her? We spent the rest of the afternoon thinking up names. We finally decided on Swift. Daniel said, I like that name. It's short and it means faster than fast. It always feels good when you do the right thing. Love, Teddy. August 2nd, 1892. Dear Martha, today on our way to our new place, we stopped to see Lake Okeechobee. I never knew a lake could be so big. We all walked up to the levee to see it. Martha, the lake stretches as far as you can see. It's not very deep, about 12 feet in the deepest part. But Pap said he heard it's teeming with fish. Mama said, how could anyone ever starve in a country like this? Pap said to me and Daniel, how about the three of us come back sometime and go fishing? We agreed that would be a bushel load of fun. I would love any adventure that involved Pap and Daniel. Of course, it would be better if you could be with us too. I'm still hoping you can visit. We drove a few more hours and then we were here. Pap said, according to this map, this is it. This is our land. Mama stood on the wagon seat and shaded her eyes. She looked all around. Then she said, Dalton Bodane, I do believe we are home. Home. This will be our new home. It doesn't feel like home yet, but that will come later. We drove all around the property. We have 40 acres, and a spring runs alongside the, east, the, alongside the eastern side of our land. The land is pretty scruffy, but there are a few large oak trees clustered near the spring. Mama said, Dalton, let's put the wagon here so we can make use of the shade. The spring will be nice for cooking and bathing. Pap said, it's big enough to swim in. What do you think, children? Want to try it out later? 
We cheered, and Ethelbert ran around in circles. Daniel and Pap unhitched the oxen and watered the animals. Mama said, Teddy, we have an extra canvas. Remember when your Pap tied it up so that Girlie wouldn't get wet in the rain? Well, we can make an awning that will give us more shade and keep a bigger space dry if it rains. I found the canvas. Daniel and I shook it out while Pap raked the leaves where Mama wanted to stretch the canvas. While Pap and Daniel cut branches and stripped the leaves and bark, Mama and I painted the tarp with linseed oil. She said, we're getting pretty good at this, don't you think, Teddy? I love the familiar smell of linseed oil. I had slept so many nights under that smell. I felt like it had become a part of me. By late afternoon, we had the wagon parked under the oaks, a patch of ground cleared of rocks and sticks and rakes and sticks and rakes smooth, and a canvas awning stretched out from the side of the wagon to four tall wood poles. It was pretty good for a half day's work. Pop said, what do you say we go swimming in the spring? Mama said, with all this work to do, you want to go swimming? Pop said, yes, I do, and I want my wife and children to go with me. Mama smiled. All right, then. Let me get, a, get on some old clothes and get the baby ready. We splashed and played in the spring for at least an hour. It felt wonderful. I didn't realize how hot and sweaty we all were until we were cooling off in the clear flowing water of the spring. Our spring. We own land. We own trees. We own a spring. It seems hard to believe. This place is ours. Daniel made a campfire, a good one. Pap said, son, somebody taught you well. This is about as fine as campfires I've ever seen. Daniel said, my pap taught me. Pap said, I'm sure I would have liked him. Too bad I didn't get to meet him. But I'll get to know him through you, Daniel. Mama and I fixed dinner, and guess what? Our jerky was still good. Can you believe it? Love, Teddy.